everybody to the 2019 Moving Up Ceremony of HH Wells Middle School. I would like to invite this year's class president, Kristen Mulvihill, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Kristen. Just keep it short. Nobody wants to hear you go on and on. 
So I'm going to do my best. On Wednesday, you will be walking out the doors of Henry H. Wells Middle School. For most of you, the next time you enter the building will be in four years wearing caps and gowns while our future middle schoolers cheer you on. In your science classes, you have studied living organisms and how they start out as tiny seeds. With water, sunlight, and nutrients from the soil, these tiny seeds grow, many into beautiful trees and flowers. There's a Chinese proverb that says, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Warren Buffett, one of the world's greatest investors, echoed this sentiment. Someone is sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. You see, the actions you take today will have a major impact on your future and on the future of others. Here are a few important facts about seeds. It's been a long time since I took the living environments. Think back to when you entered Wells. Um, number one, okay, seeds take time to grow. Think back to when you entered Wells as sixth graders. In these three short years, you have shown incredible growth. You've grown physically. You've grown intellectually, emotionally, and hopefully you have learned many valuable lessons along the way. You've made friendships and memories that will last a lifetime. It didn't all happen overnight. It happened over time. We look forward to seeing all of you continue to blossom. Number two, as plants grow, they experience significant change, but their roots grow stronger every day. Many people are afraid of change. They become comfortable doing what they've always done. Some people dig in their heels and refuse to grow. However, when they don't accept change, their growth stops. The reality is that you are supposed to change. It's unavoidable. So do whatever you can to change for the better. Make good choices, knowing that they will help you grow in a positive way, and avoid the choices that will harm you. The more you nurture yourselves with positive choices, the healthier you will grow, and your roots will become stronger. Number three, plants support other living creatures by providing oxygen and often produce beautiful flowers. As you continue to grow, you will have many opportunities to plant seeds of your own. You will be able to contribute to our school, our community, and our world. As you have continued your growth here at Wells over the past years, so many of you have already planted seeds, adding beauty and support to others. Here are just a few examples of your contributions, and there are so many. You have, you as a group, have supported community agencies like Putnam Cap and Cove Cares through student-led fundraisers, a student-initiated sock drive, beautiful artwork to help those who are facing challenging times. You've supported each year Toys for Tots by bringing in toys to brighten the lives of children during the holidays. You've started student-driven initiatives to eliminate plastic straws from the cafeteria and to recycle plastic bottles to help preserve the environment and the oceans. You've participated in the leadership club, student government, to bring about positive changes in our community. You've given up your personal time to be peer mentors and tutors for other students who value your guidance and your support. You've presented to your peers at grade level assemblies, tutored younger students at CB Star, and probably most importantly, you've supported and celebrated your peers. You've done an amazing job of being there for each other. Each of you has an opportunity to change the world, to do great things, to plant your own seeds. I hope that you use this opportunity wisely to make the world a better place for others. As students, you came here to learn from us, but we have learned so much from you, and we are grateful for the lessons you have taught and the memories that you have planted for us at Wells. In September, you will head off to BHS, and we will welcome new sixth graders into our community. Even though you will no longer be at H.H. Wells, you will always be a part of our family. Thank you for your many contributions. We hope you will cherish the time you spent with us and have great success in the days ahead of you. Congratulations to all of you. We are very proud of you all, and we look forward to seeing you at graduation in four years. Thank you.
to invite our superintendent, Dr. Howard Edmund, and Piedmont to address our WMS class of 2019. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Good evening, students, parents, and families, Board of Education trustees, educators, administrators, and guests. We are here to celebrate the end of middle school and the beginning of four wonderful years as a student right here at Brewster High School. Although you are just about to enter high school, believe it or not, you need to start planning now for how you're going to make the best use of these four years and how you will strive to do your best. Doing your best is the sentiment expressed in our profile of a graduate, which emphasizes a set of academic and social-emotional skills that are essential for success in life, work, and future learning. These skills will help you to apply logical reasoning to identify and solve problems, work together for a common goal, consider other viewpoints and bring a sense of courage to unfamiliar situations, stick to a task and learn from your mistakes, and work toward improving various communities that you are a member of. You've heard your teachers, your school counselors, Mr. Clark, Mrs. Hernandez, Mrs. Hernandez, Mr. Allen, and other staff members interested in your success emphasize the importance of these skills. Guess what? You're going to hear them here from everyone in the high school. The adults at HH12s in Brewster High School are not the only ones talking about the importance of these skills. For the last decade, practically anything written about how schools can get students ready for college and careers has made reference to the importance of these skills and the determination of your future success. Let me give you an example. During the school year, an influential global organization called the World Economic Forum released a report called The Future of Jobs. Who in this audience, among you eighth graders, want to eventually find a career that will help you live a comfortable life? Raise your hand. Good. And I expect all of you to listen very, very closely to what I'm about to say next. The members of this World Economic Forum represent about a thousand of the top companies in the world that track the trends of job markets and industries all over the world. They are particularly interested in the trends brought on by innovation and change because these companies want to be able to address anything that will affect their ability to adapt, survive, and remain competitive in the world. The Future of Jobs report mentioned something called the Fourth Industrial Re Revolution that is happening right now and will still be underway right around the time that you are going to graduate from this high school. So what's the big deal about the Fourth Industrial Revolution? For one thing, the pace of change is rapid and frequent. Artificial intelligence that involves sophisticated robots that can do anything from stocking shelves and stores to other tasks that don't necessarily require a human being to be anywhere near. Combined technologies fueled by 5G, 6G, 7G, I don't know what it's going to be up to when you're about to graduate, but it will allow the transmission of massive amounts of data at rapid speeds in a short amount of time thus making tasks that used to take several hours possible in only a few minutes. This type of work that you will do when you are ready to start your career won't look the same as it does today. And there are jobs that you will have that don't exist today and jobs that exist today that will disappear and no longer exist. Whether you are interested in a career involved in cybersecurity, for example, or work in a, cust a customer service center, these jobs will require skills outlined in our profile of a graduate, which you've heard about since sixth grade, and that I mentioned earlier, and that you'll have four more years to practice. So, what should you do in high school to prepare for this reality? Take courses that stretch or challenge you as a thinker. Don't let the fact that you might not get an A discourage you. View failure or disappointment as an opportunity to learn. 
Don't be afraid to try out for a sport that you may not be that good at, or a club where there are no students that you don't, or that there are students that you don't know very well. Engage in community service, not because it's a requirement for an honor society membership, but because you feel good when you do good things for others and you improve society. Assume a leadership role in school to address a problem that benefits everyone. And don't wait for an adult to direct you. Take initiative, put forth ideas and solutions, and follow through. When you do these things, students, all of you can do these things. You are developing habits that will serve you well all throughout high school and prepare you for success in a rapidly changing world. Students, enjoy all that the high school has to offer you and use every minute of your time being your very best self. Congratulations. The next part of our program is a scholars program. In continuation of a tradition that began several years ago, and since scholarship is the center of what we do, we will now begin our academic recognition. Families and friends, in your programs, you will see the list of this year's eighth grade scholars. All the students listed have earned 93% or better for the first three marking periods of this school year earning no quarterly or semester grade below a 74. Tonight we have a total of 58th graders who have achieved this, subsequently earning high honor roll status. We commend you for your discipline and persistence, knowing that this is no easy feat. Congratulations. You also notice that we have 39 three-year scholars denoted in the program. This distinction means that students have earned high honor roll status for 11 consecutive quarters of middle school. For those students who have earned this honor, there's another goal to aim for. The seven-year scholar award given to graduating seniors by the Brewster Education Foundation. Seven-year scholars have maintained high honor roll status since the first quarter of their sixth grade year, having been consecutively enrolled consecutively enrolled in the Brewster schools from day one of grade six through the end of grade 12. The Brewster Education Foundation awards a $500 scholarship to these students who can maintain this remarkable accomplishment for 27 consecutive marking periods. At this time, I would like to announce the eighth grade scholars. We ask the scholars to stand to be recognized and to remain standing until all recipients have been announced. Please hold applause until all recipients are standing. Scholars, certificates are enclosed with your promotion certificates. The 2018-2019 Grade 8 Scholars. Suhan Akula, Ismail Arenas, Charlotte Armand, Julia Arroyo, Lucas Bertone, Sean Carlo. Ellen Cassidy, Ariel Choi, Madison Dakin, Ella Delaney Bunning, Gia Del Cagliano, Nicholas DeFabio, Fabio, sorry, Avril Downing, Francesca Dreyai, Jancy Espinosa, Elise Farrell, Dylan Filmer, Isabella Volchetti, Patrick Ford, Jaden Gonzalez, Victoria Hagenauer, Aaron Kelly, Stephen Kovaleski, Victoria Kovaleski, Mary Ledley, Sarah Maloney, Anaya Marte, Rusha Matai, Marissa Mendez Vasquez, Melissa Mendez Vasquez, Olivia Masica, Guadalupe Miguel Mendez, Kristen Mulvihill, Chelsea Nicole Newton, Megan O'Gorman, Philip Astoya, Mia Palladino, David Paris, 
Alexa Ron, Kobe Rosario, Ava Ross, Zachary Schwartz, Ergis Shallow, Tyler Sherman, Justin Smith, Justine Wall, Alexandra White, Anna Whitehead, Linda Zhao, and Jordan Young. Congratulations on your accomplishments and keep up the good work. You may be seated. I would like to call Ms. Daria Pascali to the podium to present the Barbara Gillette Memorial Award. created in 2011 after the passing of our dear colleague, Barbara Gillette. Ms. Gillette was a passionate Spanish teacher for Brewster for over 25 years. She believed very strongly in embracing cultural diversity. Barbara was a leader and a truly remarkable person. Barbara was our friend. Barbara was an advocate for lifelong learning. She was fiercely independent she was an avid reader, gardener, and had three of the most remarkable Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. Barbara was well known for her unique and outrageous jewelry and her intense gusto for life. <laughs> the staff and students were greatly saddened at Ms. Uh, Gillette's passing. One student wrote, your class was one of our favorites. And we all gained a new passion for language and for life because of you. Barbara was special to the staff as well. She was unbelievably kind and thoughtful. Barbara was the one to make a meal for a sick friend, knit for soldiers overseas, and provide a ride for the friend whose car had broken down. She is fondly remembered for her intelligence, her wit, her compassion for others. In honor of Ms. Gillette, the award is presented to an eighth grade student who demonstrates the spirit of service to others, compassion, a love of learning languages, and appreciation of cultural differences. The award is in the amount of $600. It's my honor to announce that this year's recipient of the Barbara Gillette Award is Shashank Sharma.
Resilient is the word that describes the second student's drive to fulfill his potential for academic success, pursue athletics, and to have a typical middle school experience despite his life circumstances. Strength and grace describe our third student who continues to achieve academic excellence while being a support to her family and friends despite experiencing tragic loss. All three of these students exhibit courage, character, and commitment in many ways, and this is why Zachary Schwartz Roberto Chrysostomo. <laughs> and Anaya Martin. I would now like to introduce Ms. Christian Hernandez to explain the Presidential Awards and Achievement and Excellence. Good evening. The President's Education Award Program is designed to recognize those students whose outstanding efforts have enabled them to meet the challenging standards of excellence. The award consists of two categories. The President's Award for Educational Excellence, and the President's Award for Educational Achievement. The eligibility criteria is based on student GPA, ranging from 90 to 92.999, and teacher recommendation. After reviewing the student's GPA for grades six, seven, and eight here at Wells Middle School, we then looked at the students and placed them into one of two levels, academic excellence and academic achievement. Here is a brief description of each level. Students that may have missed the high honor roll scholars distinction by a small margin, but have shown high academic consistency, earn the President's Award for Academic Excellence. Students that missed the high honor roll scholars distinction by a larger margin, but have shown consistent effort and may have overcome obstacles in and out of school, earn the President's Award for Academic Achievement. Please stand to be recognized and remain standing until all names are called. Please hold your applause, audience, until all names have been called. The 2018-19 President's Education Award for Outstanding Academic Excellence. Sabrina Bizio, Isabella Boisenault, Morgan Brace, Emma Bridges, Joshua Constantino, Roberto Cristosimo, Owen Cunningham, Angelina Curtin, Bryce DiCarlo, Nicholas DeFabio, Avril Downey, Kyle Dodonis, Kylie Dodonis, I'm sorry, Daylene Espana, Ella Vicara, Nicholas Fulcetti, Grace Garrett, Michaela Goldberg, Michaela Gonzalez, Mateo Gula, Jasmine Guzman Pacheco, Jack Harrison, Elizabeth Haywood, Gerson Landeberry, Denise Leon, Connor Lopez, Caitlin McGarvel, Jason McGill, James McGowan, Alexandra Miola, Ale Alessia Nitti, Angelo Pagnata, Andrew Pfeffer, Mo Poli, Thomas Quarry, Kelly Rep, Isabella Sabbath,
Alexandra Sager, Mark Stano, Kyan Stockfield, Autumn Takis, Anthony Tartabono, Leo Thomas, Marco Tahansky, Andrew Tyndall, and Anthony Luca. academic achievement, Joseph Anfuso, Colin Brennan, William Harlan, Sabas Coronado Mejia, Karina Danielli, Isabella Fazio, Justin Fritzen, Patrick McDonough, Jenna McNamara, Madison Medina, Alan Racinos, Emma Rollins, Leah Roy, Matthew Ryan, Luke Sanchez, and Sophia Sanchez. I would like to introduce Dr. Michelle Gosh, Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction, who will, who will present the Wells Academic Excellence Medallion Awards. Thank you, Mr. Clark. I am pleased to present the next set of awards, the Wells Academic Excellence Medallion Awards. They are achieved through focus and hard work within our academic areas. Please come forward when your name is called to receive your medallion. For art, Rusha Matai. Technology Education, Nick DeFabio. Two students for health, Kobe Rosario and Jordan Young. Two students for physical education, Patrick Ford and Jancy Espinosa. Four students for music, vocal, Elizabeth Podansky. Marco Kahansky. <laughs> Orchestra, Dylan Filmer and Alicia Nitti. For <laughs> general music, there's actually five. Gary Maelstrom. Ishmael Arenas.
finally, last but not least, social studies. Alicia Nitti, Alan Racinos, and Francesca Dry.
I would now like to introduce Mr. Michael Petorti to present the third outstanding student award. Thank you, Michael. Often we judge our students' achievements based solely on numbers. We look at their averages and their scores on academic tests. A successful person is so much more than just a handful of statistics. Tonight's recipient of this award shows that not only do grades matter, but also their ability to thrive outside of the classroom, socially, athletically, and as a member of the community. You may be aware that the white team is a little larger than normal this year, but despite that, her name was mentioned by a plethora of teachers, some that didn't even have the opportunity to work with her this year. She could be considered a role model, not just to a younger mother, but also to many of her peers. In fact, I know a few adults who can learn one or two things from her. She is always ready and able to lend a helping hand, whether in the classroom solving geometry groups, groups or on the court playing basketball, uh, playing ball, pressing spectators, despite playing with girls older than her. However, more important than her mentoring and continuously growing activities is her ability to show compassion and empathy. This year, I had the pleasure of reading a memoir she penned that was perhaps one of the most touching and impressive student stories I've had to ever cross my desk. While I would never admit to that I might have perhaps left a tear or so on my desk because I was very big. It did leave me with a new proof, uh, newfound pers uh, perspective on this girl, which has proven time and time again in her interactions with her friends and family. It is an understatement to say that her presence will be missed when she graces the face of next year. With a healthy dose of reverence and joy, I announce that the third outstanding student award goes to Madison Mead. Congratulations, everybody. At this time, it is our honor and pleasure to introduce the graduates of the class of 2019. The names will be presented by our eighth grade guidance counselor, Mrs. Leslie Holliday.
Aquino. Joshua Contreras. Tapas Coronado Mejia. Connor Costello. Roberto Chrysostomo. Margo Cunningham. Oli Cunningham. Angelina Curtin. Madison Bacon. Trina Daniele. Nina DiPazio. Ella Delaney Bunning. Thank you.
Connor McCullough.
Ms. Danielle Gipoto, Assistant Principal of Brewster High School. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the Brewster High School Administrative Team, I would like to congratulate you on your accomplishments and your accolades that you have received tonight. I have to tell you, I am truly inspired by your stories and moved by your genuine support for each other. I have had the opportunity to work with you several times this year on our visit to Wells, freshman orientation, and you've seen me racing through the halls as I've been visiting classrooms, always giving me the right direction on where to go. I have to commend all of you for presenting yourselves and representing your school with respectful and professional conduct and behavior. You have made quite an impression on your high school assistant principal. After your freshman orientation, I have to tell you, I was bombarded by our faculty and staff at Brewster High School and our students who could not wait to commend your exemplary behavior. They are so excited to have you as part of our high school beginning in the fall. Navigating through middle school, I'm sure, was no easy task. I'm sure there were bumps along the way, but you've, over, you've overcame those bumps and you've worked through all of them. You are now ready for the next part of your journey. Let me be the first to officially welcome you to Brewster High School. You are now the class of 2023. 